Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 371. Uh, each week uh, we uh, meet here to uh, review the questions asked and answered on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight we have uh, uh, Tim Kapper. Uh, Tim is uh, CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. He's also a Google product expert uh, in the Google My Business uh, community. Uh, he's based in Corby, about 100 miles um, north of um, London. And just joining us now is um, uh, Micah Fischer-Kirschner. Micah is president of... Uh, a, an SEO meetup, the, the SEO meetup group uh, um, just um, west of Silicon Valley or just north of Silicon Valley, something like that. Um, Micah is also head of SEO for Turn River Capital. Um, yeah, he didn't make it on. Um, he probably got the wrong, oh, anyway. Um, and... Uh, uh, <laughs> Goodness me. David Rosam is uh, uh, a leading uh, internet uh, marketer. He's based in Corby um, on the sunny south of the UK. And uh, Masataki Wasa uh, is on web. Is something wrong, Tim? Corby, not Corby. Little Hampton, West Sussex. Tim oh. is your call. And oh, sorry, I've got things going <laughs> up and turning on here, and uh, I'm just trying to hold it together. Um, all right, and Masataki was. Well, so let's not forget Masataki, he's based in Wimbledon, um, in uh, the UK. He's also a Google product expert on the Google uh, um, AdSense uh, community. All right, uh, let's have a look at our questions tonight. The, the, the first one uh, is um, a question regarding PNG or JPEG. Um, he wants to know, JL Faverio, um, he's asked a number of questions of us. Uh, he wants to know if it's good or bad for SEO to convert PNG files, portable network graphics files, into uh, joint photographic group um, images for faster loading. Uh, your thoughts? Um, yes. Um, it's it's probably the wrong question, isn't it? Um, that you you want you want whatever the 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 best um, the best format the most appropriate format is for quick loading and quality you you need to you need to end up with a a nice small file that that is not going to be compromised on quality so um that's that's your thing it's not um it's not down to uh the format specifically it's down to um whether you can serve these things up um quickly and um looking prettily um I think I'm, I'm right in saying that PNG files are better for um, for um, what's a what's a what's a proper description of this? Um, things like diagrams, lumps of colour, um, and JPEGs for photo photographs. Um, that's right, isn't it? Um, yes. Okay, I'm going to stop now, just in case I dig myself into a hole where I do not know what I'm talking about. Thank you, David. Anybody else? Yeah, and size matters. So, you know, you might say JPEG files are smaller, but if it's large, then it's going to be large and it's going to take time. So having properly sized images is probably more important than the format itself. Um, but generally speaking, JPEG files are smaller, so that makes sense. And if they are progressive JPEGs, um, that's even better because then people will see something before it, those images are fully loaded. Uh, WebP is mentioned in the comments. I would caution that I don't think Safari supports the format. 
So if you're going to use WebP, make sure there's a fallback, so there's an image set, so that um, browsers that don't support WebP can fall back on um, JPEG, for example. Um, you can use things like mod page speed. Um, that would automatically optimize your images. So there are many ways of doing this. Um, and the question is, will converting all PNG files into JPEG files, will that make a material difference to the visitor? You know, will it make the site so much faster that people will notice? I think that would be the question I'll, that I'll be asking myself. And also, you know, is it feasible? Is it something that can be done on, in batches? I, it can be done in batches. And, you know, is it a reasonably simple task that can be done and with um, benefits? So it's a question of priorities and it's a question of what you can serve. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Okay, um, if, if nobody has anything to add, uh, let's uh, um, wrap this one and go to the next. This one from Shayo Chia Lo, who uh, has also asked questions of us in the past. Um, it's titled hreflang uh, versus uh, XML sitemap versus HTML versus HTTP header for a big site. Oh, um, Shayo said, uh, hi, I recently tried to quality control or quality check one of my uh, uh, clients' hreflang implementations, a huge e-commerce site with more than 10 million pages. He said, I found it really hard uh, uh, to quality control or examine certain pages uh, because they are using sitemap hreflang, especially when I try to examine a specific page and I have to go back to the sitemaps uh, to see if there is the reference and I already found a lot of errors in their hreflang sitemaps too. However, should I recommend to them to use HTML or HTTP method uh, instead? I heard that HTML hreflang will increase page weight but those codes are not render blocking, nor do they have to download or send HTTP request. Uh, they are just uh, plain text. So it seems it shouldn't affect page speed too much, right? He said, how about HTTP hreflang? Uh, how would you deal with a huge uh, e-commerce site's hreflang? Let me know your thoughts uh, or experiences. Thank you. Yes, it, it, it's, um, it's a vexed question, isn't it? Bill Hunt and Richard Hearn commented on this question, and I generally agree with, with their points. I think for a very large site, XML sitemap is probably the best way to go. Yeah, that's cool, the Masataki. Yes, I didn't see that one there. And Bill, um, Bill has put a lot of effort into this. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, if you're watching this later on, uh, I, I'd recommend going to the uh, uh, Darmesia Questions Facebook group and uh, uh, checking the, the answers uh, given there. All right, let's um, wrap this one and go to the next, number three on our run list, from JL Faverio. He said, I over, overdo SEO tasks on a regular basis um, because, one, I care too much about the client's business and uh, act as if it were my own business. 
He said, two, I enjoy learning slash experimenting um, the best ways to perform SEO tasks. He said, I don't trust some colleagues to do as good a job as I do. Um, there'll be a four. Yes, there is. Uh, he said that most of our SEO campaigns have a set amount of hours we're expected to perform each month. Uh, does anyone feel this way uh, or work in a simpler, a similar uh, environment? Uh, uh, any critical advice is welcome. Thanks. Well, I mean, I tend to overdo things also. Um, it probably majority of the time tends to be the smaller business. Um, purely because they nine times out of ten don't have the ideal budget um, and if I've got an extra couple of hours you know um, I like to throw things in um, also like to play around you know um, and see different things um, and, 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 and how they work you know um, it's like when events were going around, you know, I started, you know, and structured data, messing about with that, seeing if we can get things moving different ways. Um, I don't think it's bad. However, you do need to balance, you know, we all got to make money. Um, so sometimes, you know, you've got to make sure that you're actually, um, you know, making a profit um, for yourself. If it's more that you're doing it for yourself, messing about, you know, just feel like you want to give them a little bit of extra because they're just nice bloody people, um, then just look at it as your own time. Don't look at it, you know, sort of in terms of business time. Um, but, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I do tend to do that. Um, ah, I've worked on the agency level when literally everything's time sheeted. Um, and like, you know, they won't put a full stop in a freaking page if it means two seconds extra on that client's budget. Um, so I don't, I just definitely don't agree with that. Um, I think this is just your personal personal preference, man. Cool. Thanks, Tim. Anything? Any anybody else? I was just going to say I basically agree with Tim. I think I think it's a it's a balanced thing, isn't it? Um, and yeah, <coughs> the only colleague I have is my social media lead, the uh, the kind of fluffy four legged chap. So uh, it all falls down to me. Um, and I think, yes, the, the, the learning part, the learning part is something that we need to, uh, we, we need to pay for ourselves. That's, that's on the job learning. That's continuous skill acquisition, whatever they call it in, in the corporate world. Um, so yeah, um, if you do the thing and you spend a bit more time because you don't know how to do it, then that's down to you. That's not down to the, the client, I feel. Uh, they're paying for expertise, not lack of expertise. Um, so I think it's fairly, um, yeah, it, it's very much, you do end up um, spending more time than is budgeted. Um, it's just keeping that, that's sensible um, and making sure that it's a level that, that both you and your client benefit from. Uh, it's no good you going bust or feeling hungry or feeling resentful because you're working overnight on stuff. Um, you know, you've, you've got to feel good about it as well. So uh, I think, you know, if you go too far and uh, overdo your what you're doing for your client, uh, then you you end up in another problem. Um, so, yeah, um, yes and no, but mainly yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. 
All right, let's um, roll on to our next on our run list. Um, this one is number four. It's from Tobias Hagermeister. Um, how to avoid keyword cannibalization. He said, uh, hello, everybody. For a new website project, I do have a question related to keyword cannibalization. We want to publish beginner's guides, uh, for example, uh, uh, Facebook ads. Uh, and inside uh, this detailed guide, uh, one chapter will be the Facebook Ads Manager, described on a high level. Later on, we would like to publish a more detailed blog post just focusing on the Facebook Ads Manager topic. I'm not quite sure how this uh, works on um, Google, um, as, as both uh, content assets could theoretically rank for the same keyword facebook ads manager in total i'd like to avoid keyword cannibalization from the beginning uh, any ideas how to handle that use case uh, thanks in advance well you, you're never gonna you know if they within the same sort of category field the only way you're going to not have something potentially, uh, you know, um, appearing for the same thing is not to write it. It's as simple as that. <laughs> um, if it's, you know, the, the trick is to try and structure it. So, and, and potentially you can do that with internal linking. So your secondary one will reference your main uh, your main guide that you're producing. Um, and then you can have a secondary or, you know, you can even have a third article picking a different section within that main guide, which potentially again could also cannibalize on that, but you could interlink the tertiary to the, the, the main guide again and vice versa. Um, uh, it, you know, on, on how you're structuring it. Um, but the only way you're never not, you're never going to actually prevent it from that because is, is not to write it. Uh, you know, but yeah. I don't think there is kind of bulletproof way on how to avoid it. I, I tend to lean towards Michael Martinez's uh, view on this, that keyword cannibalization is something that, uh, uh, that certain SEOs like to, uh, like to throw around. Um, I've seen a couple of presentations at, uh, at conferences and the they've basically they've basically struck i've basically struggled to understand the uh the, the 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 presentation the rationalization the explanation um i think um my my view is if you can get two or three or four of your pages on the first page you're ex excluding your uh uh, your competitors from that first page. So um, I, I'm. it's not something I worry about, really, because uh, I like the idea of, of perhaps getting my, uh, getting my pages uh, to exclude um, the, the competitors. It's a, it's a difficult one. Um, if you believe in keyword cannibalization, then you need to go down the being very, very careful with structuring and what you actually write about, as, as Tim's just said, um, if you're um, if you're not sure, uh, shall we say, uh, about the the whole concept, then go ahead and write some really good content on both pages and try and get both of them on the first page. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I'd... Look, I mean, so. My, in, you know, the thing I do is local SEO. Pretty much everything 
on my site is kind of around local SEO. Um, but sort of different things. And I must have a couple hundred, maybe thousand different bits of content that could potentially, that has local SEO in, in, in the sort of title. I mean, I, I think you, I think try and plan out your main guide, right? Which is for your main target sort of keyword. And your secondary is going to be like, I think, like you said, it's going to be different, you know, different expanding on different sections within that. Um, maybe just look at rejigging the title, not having the exact main keyword towards it, try and expand on that uh, in that sense, which also gives you a different variation of a longer tail search, search word more refined. Um, and you can, you know, depending on how many sections in the main guide, you can continually build on that. Uh, your main guide would be the actual, uh, you know, the main thing for that the, for the primary term, and then the others are secondary, uh, drawing people in from from different uh, variations within that, um, and then of course leading into the main guide itself. But you know, you're never you're never going to stop it, unfortunately. Um, what you don't want to be doing is what do they call it facebook ads or something you don't want to be starting every single you know you know your first thing could be facebook ads guide a guide to facebook ads your next thing is you know your next secondary article you don't want to be calling it facebook ads um you know it would be developing or or using using location data tracking whatever within Facebook ads. It's not going to really cannibalize it because that's not the actual crux of it. The crux of that is Facebook ads is a part of it, uh, but we're looking at location data of the user, and that's what the main article is going to be about. So, yeah, just, just plan it out. Plan it out properly, really. I think you're never going to completely stop it, but just plan it out on, on how it's going to, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, sorry for the delay. Thank you very much, Tim. Um, all right, let's uh, move on to number five on our run list. Um, this one is from Chris Green. That's it. He said, that will Google consider a subdomain as a separate site? Most definitely. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, a website owner, I have a question, a website owner who's site slash blog is on WordPress, now wants to add a store specifically Shopify, not WooCommerce. From my research and also contacting Shopify, it seems you can only add it as a subdomain, e.g., uh, for example, uh, shop.domain.com um, slash Shopify. Um, sorry, not slash, in brackets, uh, Shopify. Since this is the case, Will Google consider the store separate from um, the main site um, as it's um, on a subdomain? Uh, yeah, it, it, it will be, but you're going to be you're going to be linking it all as as a site. You know, your header will be saying shop here. <laughs> in the Shopify section, you'll be like, hey, check out this article or, or check out this guide on how to put something on, which would be from the main domain. Although it is, it's still going to be, you're still going to be navigational wise and, 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 and thing, uh, interlinking between everything, creating kind of a, a you know, a, uh, a user journey between the two. And ultimately it would, would benefit each other, but it is separate, but you're gonna be create, you know, creating that, that, that uh, you know, the, the, the semblance of a, of, of a si si singular site. Okay. All right. Uh, 
Right, moving on to number six on our run list. This one from Nathan Nikolai Guidi. Um, he wants to know, is a splash page as index.html a bad idea? Um, he said, my theory is that it will load faster and have a high engagement rate. One, will that be considered a bounce if someone clicks enter? Two, does Google calculate all of the pages speed or just the main pages? Um, and uh, I imagine that because the splash page does not have content, it would not rank too high. Um, it's a very, very bad idea. Um, mainly for, um, I guess, mainly for UX but uh, also for, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's a, it's a bad idea for SEO. It's bad, bad for UX. It's um, the, the whole, there's, there's no reason for the poor user to go any further. You just put some bloody silly logo up and that means nothing to no one. Um, and they're just, you know, you're one click. You're putting a, a click between um, between the the person and what you actually want to say to them, which is on your your second page. Um, so uh, don't do it. It's uh, it's daft, um, and it went out of fashion about fifteen years ago for a reason. Yeah, don't do it. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, David. All right, uh, let's have a look at um, our next. And this one is from Chris Green. He said, my main site is targeting Australia, but its blog is not. He said, hi, guys. If I have a .com domain targeting Australia in Google Search Console, it has a blog, and I want some of the articles to rank internationally. You do you think Google will limit my exposure to overseas countries? Um, for example, USA, uh, due to Google Search Console being set to Australia? Uh, no, not necessarily. Um, <laughs> I'm, 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 my 90% of the stuff I write is, is intended for the UK, the language I use is for the UK. 99% of my traffic comes from the US because it just makes sense um, to show that content to the user who's searching for it. Uh, however, you know, if you're, so it, yeah, it, 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 it kind of, obviously if you, you know, something on, 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 on the, if the particular article on the blog references something completely specific to to australia i don't know it's got a city name in or something like this of course that's not going to be displayed internationally um because you know well unless the person's actually searching for something you know with that name in but if it's you know a general concept idea tip to a product to a whatever then yes, it it will it will still show if it's best in class for that query. It's not going to be not displayed to them if it's you know if it if it fits the search query, regardless of where they are, it will be displayed to them. Yep, thank you, Tim. All right, uh, let's roll on to the next. And it is uh, from Nathan Nikolai Gady. Uh, he said, would, Grug would Google crawl mobile and desktop separately? Uh, Nathan said, hey, uh, so my mobile version doesn't have my blog posts links, but the desktop version does. Um, would Google crawl the mobile and desktop separately? Um, if they are two separate 
sites in effect if there's a mobile site and a, a desktop site then uh, they will be uh, they will be crawled separately um, if it's a responsive design well that's one site and it will be um, crawled as one site um, yes goes off i'm just just having a look at the community answers i'm going to yeah, stop isn't it is the question that i've question that i've got is, is why doesn't his mobile version have the same internal link in or the links in within the same internal structure as the desktop why, why why are you doing that i don't i don't i don't get it Well, I guess because his blog is is linking to uh, his site, uh, his his main dub 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 site, and um, uh, it doesn't make sense to have two links, uh, one for the well, mobile. No, if it's if it's two separate sites, so so if you're if it's two separate sites, like what I'm saying is the mobile should still have the internal linking to the mobile version pages that he did on on the pages on on the desktop side so if if he's got like the word in the desktop saying i don't know pink fluffy elephant and that pink fluffy elephant links to the pink fluffy elephant product page on the desktop in the mobile that pink fluffy elephant should link to the pink fluffy elephant mobile version page he should still be the same. I don't understand why he hasn't put the, the links in. Like, it should be, a, yeah, I don't get it. No, I, 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 I've now read the rest of this, and I, I don't understand it either. Um, it just sounds, you know, why has it been done this way? Um, you know, presumably this, uh, this Figma, um, thing is a way of designing two parallel um, sites. I, I'm not familiar with Figma, um, but you know, why would you want to do the two parallel sites? It's so much easier to, to maintain a, uh, um, a responsive site. Thank you, David. All right, um, interesting discussion on the dumb SEO questions Facebook group on this one. Okay, um, so let's wander along to number nine on our run list. It said, could violation of Google rules impact paid campaigns? Um, Kirill Cronrod asks a quick question. Could violation Google violation of Google rules by a site, um, for example, uh, that is uh, running paid backlinks campaigns, impact paid campaigns, um, uh, that is uh, increase in cost per click. Thanks, uh, Kirill. So I've never never heard of an increase in costs because you're doing something naughty um essentially if you're doing something naughty you're going to be looking at a manual penalty ultimately if you get caught you can still be running google ads and you can still be paying the same um cost per click um i've never heard of cost per click being more if you're sat on a manual penalty. True. In fact, they, they don't care. They, probably not, not so much that they don't care. They don't know. Um, they're, they're totally two different schools of, um, schools of thought, if you like, and uh, two silos which um, don't cross over. Can, can I be, uh, can I put my, uh, my cynical head on and say, wouldn't this be another lovely uh, opportunity for Google to make some more money if they could do this? Because you've lost your um, you've you've lost your organic traffic, so you've got to go for 
for PPC and they jack the PPC price up because you've uh, you've buggered up your site. Yeah, totally. It would be it would be brilliant, you know. I mean, it would just be a <laughs> making it rain even more money. Um, <laughs> but let's not forget that, uh, ironically, now of course it's never been proven. But you know, in the days when um, Penguin was around. Um, and massive sites were being hit uh, with penalties, how quickly they got out of those penalties based upon their PPC spend. Uh, but that, that was when dinosaurs uh, walked the earth, was it not, as well as penguins? Yeah, I think it's still the case. You spend in if you spend in two million a year on ads, and your site had some manual penalty. You pick up the phone to the ad rep, and um, well, I reckon, no, I reckon it would still it would still happen within days, rather than the you know a couple of months it would take to normally sort out rectify the situation. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right, uh, let's go to uh, uh, number number 10. Um, James Chin, he says, I'm new in this SEO thing. Please help me. He said, hi, I have just set up a new website and I'm new in this SEO thing. I, I, I read that writing... I read that writing article content and backlinks to the website will help in ranking, um, but also duplicate content in different websites is no good. I see Michael Martinez gives the following good advice. He said, ignore all the advice you read online about building links by submitting oh. articles to other sites. Yeah, totally, man. It's just that like Jesus wept. Yeah, James, just listen. <laughs> Look at your site. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there, there's some great, you know, some good things about, you know, um, you know, uh, getting into SEO, basic basic SEO. And I would certainly read some of them. You know, Google has one, Mars. Uh, most of the most of the large. The large um, players, um, you know, have have some decent, you know, beginner kind of guides. I would certainly read those. Um, then, concentrate on your site in terms of getting your on-page basics right across your site. I would then certainly look at um, providing useful content um to to users who may not be coming to the site yet but uh providing you know uh, useful content to to users uh, targeting them in their purchasing decision if it's not a you know if it's just a normal informational site you know creating really good stuff on your site that um you know people will find useful then I would, you know, based upon whatever genre this is, I would be joining online groups, um, you know, sort of building up sort of a, a social kind of network um, where you can actually, you know, share um, and have other people critique and look at the, the, the content and, 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 and start picking up on, on, on how that industry, that genre is, is, is perceiving and what they're liking and, and what they're linking to and stuff like that. Um, and, and, and just, you know, providing good stuff to, to the community with whatever the, the, the genre or the category or, or whatever kind of industry this, this website's based at. Um, 
and start building it up. You know, you, you, you build up your own kind of brand, brand, you know, build up the brand of the site um, so that people, you know, ultimately will start coming back to it, start looking for new information when you, you know, when you publish something new or a new guide or a new tip or a new freaking image or I don't know what the site is. And you, you know, you, you share it with the community that you start engaging with and building it. People know that, right, I'm going to click through to this because the last thing I, I read on there was, was, was spot on. It was good. I'm going to click through and read it. And the people that I know are going to appreciate this and I'm going to share it with them who are then going to come and read it and share it and potentially link to it. Um, you know, just the <laughs> same thing as in marketing in the offline world applies to the online world, you know? Um, so yeah, just forget all the crap about creating content, spinning it, saying it, freaking chucking it out on this, looking f to buy a link here yeah, and put a guest post on there. Just, just forget that stuff. Concentrate on your site, your brand. Um, and making that the best in class. Yeah, good advice, Tim. Thank you. All right. Um, any 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 more needs to be added to that? I don't say no. Yep, that's it. All right. Let's go to number eleven on our run list. I don't know who it's from. I cannot read that writing. Um, he said. What will happen if I switch the hosting company every five months? Uh, <clears throat> he said, will I get a visitor loss? Uh, does that affect SEO? And uh, we thank Nishant Singh uh, for his answer. No. Nope. <clears throat> I... I would say if you do it properly, if you know what you're doing um, and nothing goes wrong, um, because there's always a chance something will go wrong, that's the nature of things, um, then you shouldn't get visitor loss. Personally, I wouldn't do it on my main site. I would do it, uh, I had a quick scan of the, 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 uh, the, the conversations uh, further on, but um, yeah, I wouldn't do it on my main site. I'd uh, set up a, a small test site and make you know make it a, a serious site. Don't just do two or three pages. Um, but um, I, as much as I'm confident of my own abilities, um, my trumpet isn't here at the moment. But um, as much as I'm confident of my own abilities, I do not trust the world. The world has a has a uh, has a uh, has a thing about going wrong um so uh yeah i i i would uh i would say yes if you know there's you won't get visitor loss if you do it properly but i wouldn't trust it thank you david anything to add, add to this one okay all right let's um Oh, that's right. Uh, we're at the end of our um, run list uh, tonight once I click this button. Let's thank you for watching time. And uh, we do thank you uh, most sincerely. Uh, your interest in what we do makes what we do worthwhile. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this all again. But before I go, I must thank uh, people like Stockbridge Truslow, Bill Hunt, um michael martinez richard hearn that uh, all the people that, that uh, chip in day after day on our dumb seo questions facebook group and make it such a valuable resource make life so much easier for us um, to uh, um review uh, at the end of each week but i must also thank uh, masataki waso uh, david razam and Tim Kepper um, for their uh, valuable contribution. We'll be back uh, at the same time uh, next year, next week, uh, yeah, to uh, do this all again. But for now, it's good night.